I'm David Ken here with another question bank question in topic 9.5. We're looking at the Doppler effect. We have a, a diagram that shows the wavefronts produced by a stationary wave source, S. The spacing of the wavefronts is equal to the wavelength of the waves, and the wavefronts travel with speed v. So they're kind of spreading out. You can imagine uh, like dropping a pebble in a pond. That's what this diagram is. Uh, that's like a photograph of the pattern, and over time we can expect the pattern to grow in size while new rings will be formed in the center. For part A, it says that the source now moves to the right with a speed of half the velocity of the waves. So that's kind of significant compared to the waves themselves. In the space below, we want to draw four successive wavefronts to show the pattern of the waves produced by the moving source. Um, I think it's going to be a little bit easier to do this in reverse. So I'm going to start with the source at the end of its travel all the way to the right. Uh, and it just emitted a wavefront. Now, if we go into the past, the source was further to the left. Let's go into the past one period. Because the wave source is moving at half the speed of the waves, the wave source would have moved uh, half as far as the wave did. Um, let me see about maybe enlarging this so I can get a little bit more room to work with. That's a little better. Right. So in the past, now I'm going to draw the past in green. In the past, the wave source was here. Half of the distance between where it is now and where that wave front that it emitted is now. The wavefront that it emitted is uh, going to be larger than the wavefront it just emitted because it's going to have had more time uh, for that wave to travel. Uh, so it's going to be uh, twice this distance away. So that's half, a whole, and another half. It goes out to there. Let's draw that in. That's about right. Let's go into the past one more time. We'll do it in blue, maybe. In the past, the source was further to the left. Uh, it would have traveled half of a wavelength because it's traveling as half as fast as the wave. So it's going to be about here. But we now have three periods for this older wave to have grown. So it would travel one wavelength, two wavelengths, two and a half, three wavelengths. Oops. How about we make that blue? Right. We get wavefronts that look about like that. And then for our fourth wavelength, same pattern, we'll draw it in red. Uh, half of a wavelength back in time. Uh, but because this is four periods into the past, we have to move one, two, three, and a half, four wavelengths out. Because it's had four periods to grow. All right. So there is our diagram. We can see the Doppler effect in action. We can see the wave fronts bunching up in the front, spreading out in the back. The next part says that the sun rotates about its center, and light from one edge of the sun has been seen by a stationary observer, and it shows a Doppler shift of uh, four thousandths of a nanometer for light, which had a wavelength of 600 nanometers, with lots of precision, six significant figures. Assuming that the Doppler formula for sound may be used for light, estimate the linear speed of a point on the surface of the sun due to its rotation. So let's talk briefly about what we're even talking about here. So here's the sun. We're looking down on the sun. And here's an observer. Because the sun is rotating, 
one side of the sun moves towards the observer, the other side of the sun moves away from the observer. So light emitted by this side of the sun towards the observer is, uh, is blue shifted, it gets closer and closer together, whereas light emitted by this side of the sun uh, gets red shifted, gets further and further apart. So these wavelengths are longer than those wavelengths. Even though the sun is traveling in this direction, traveling up, it still emits light in all directions. So we want to try and use the Doppler formula for sound. Um, for a moving source, it tells us that the observed frequency is equal to the original frequency times the speed of the wave divided by the speed of the wave plus or minus the uh, speed of the source. That's wavelength, but we know frequencies, so let's use the relationship that frequency equals wave speed divided by wavelength to convert this to wavelengths. We can say wave speed divided by the observed wavelength equals wave speed divided by the original wavelength times the wave speed over the wave speed plus or minus the source speed. We can divide both sides by this speed of the wave. Doesn't cancel this one though, that one remains. And we can flip both sides of the equation, just to make it a little neater. Now ultimately what we want to find is this term. So let's plug in what we know. We know that the wave is shifted by four thousandths of a nanometer. It doesn't tell us whether it's blue shifted or red shifted. It's kind of up to us to determine because it's left up to us to decide because each side of the sun is spinning at the same rate. It's part of the same sphere. So the velocities are the same whether you deal with the blue shift side or the red shift side. So it's just kind of up to us to decide. And uh, let's decide that we'll deal with uh, blue shift. So we're going to make the wavelengths smaller. That means the 600 nanometer light becomes 599.996 nanometer light. It used to be 600 nanometer light. The velocity of the light is 3 times 10 to the eighth meters per second. And then we have this US, the speed of the source, and that's what we want. Um, we can see in the equation that the wavelength needs to become smaller. So we need to multiply 600 by a number less than 1. And since this is 3 times 10 to the 8th divided by 3 times 10 to the 8th, to turn this fraction into a number less than 1, we need to subtract by the speed of uh, the source, the speed of the sun. Um, this is something you can simplify in your calculator, and solve, or just rearrange algebraically. And you find that the speed of the uh, sun is 2,000 meters per second. That's the rotational speed of the sun.